Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Hobson Road Community Church. This would not be a church event if everyone had arrived on time, right? It just wouldn't feel right. It wouldn't feel like home. But we do have plenty of things planned for this evening, so I'm going to go ahead and and uh, get us started. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. We are privileged just to gather for this very special, very unique celebration. If HRCC is currently your church home, thank you for coming and celebrating with us. If HRCC is part of your past story, I know we have a number of guests already that are here from uh, HRCC seasons past. Thank you for coming back home. Welcome home, first of all. And thank you for coming home and, and just celebrating and being part of our story, being part of our legacy. We're grateful for one another tonight. We're grateful for the faithfulness of God. We're grateful for the work of God. Uh, but secondarily to that, we're grateful for one another. There are a handful of people that I want to very publicly acknowledge and thank. Many, many months ago when this weekend's celebration were just uh, one of many crazy ideas uh, that we had, uh, we put together a committee of folks from the congregation and everything that happens tonight is gonna to be the fruit of the work and the labor that they did. Uh, and so I just wanna very publicly recognize and thank Cindy Rogers, Brian Carlson, Mary Kay Hall, and Tracy Collins, all of whom are here, some of whom are still scurrying around doing various things. They worked many, many hours to put things together. I also asked Diane Edwards to coordinate the food that we were gonna have tonight. You know, I thought we were gonna put out a couple of bags of chips, but then Diane got involved, and um, there is just quite the banquet waiting for you in the other room. I also wanna say that each one of those people then uh, delegated isn't that the way we do it in the church, right? <laughs> they assigned, and so there were subcommittees of subcommittees and, and lots of people that put a lot of energy and effort to, um, <coughs> excuse me, into this evening, and you'll see each and every one of them the fruit of their labor. So thank you all for that. I'm gonna grab my water. That might be better. Would you bow your head and join me in a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your church. As it has been expressed throughout time and around the world, we thank you for your church. But we thank you very specifically tonight for Hobson Road Community Church. It has impacted each one of our lives in ways that I trust we don't even fully recognize. Thank you for your people gathered here your people that have gathered each Sunday morning in Downers Grove for 70 some years. We thank you for the privilege that we have of being a part of that story and a part of that legacy. I pray the Lord that you would add your blessing to this church, that the days ahead would be even greater than the days we've already experienced. Thank you for your spirit who empowers us. Thank you for your grace and your goodness. It's in the name of your son Jesus that we ask it and everybody says. Amen. There are a number of people that are very important to our church's story that could not be with us here tonight. We've asked some of them to send some video greetings along, and we'll see that at a couple of different times tonight. But let's watch the screens. Hello, Hobson Road Community Church. This is Janelle Stevens, now Janelle Peterson and Nicholas Peterson. We were a part of the youth ministry and music ministry in 2007 to 2010. It was such a privilege, looking back, to be just a small sliver in the legacy of 70 years. So we're grateful to God, grateful for you guys, and all the relationships we got to build. Yeah, our time at Hobson Road was huge for us, uh, and, and it was just wonderful to, to be able to make so many friendships and relationships there, and, uh, and we just really love and appreciate you all. Congratulations on 70 years. That's a huge thing to be faithful for such a, a long amount of time. We praise God, and we love you all. Hello, this is Bob Newman. For 43 years, I served as pastor at Lansing Assembly of God in Lansing, Illinois, my term as pastor almost coincided with that of Joe and Sharon West. I remember walking the property there when there were just Christmas trees with Pastor West. I think of what's happening now after you're celebrating 70 years. Look what the Lord has done. 
We were there for many miracle nights when you were raising funds and all. We want to give God the glory and rejoice with you today. Amen. Hi, Hobson Road. We are so excited to be able to celebrate with you today. I was just a little girl and I got saved at Hobson Road Church. And I have years of friendships and people who've invested in my life. Um, we went to Bible college. I met my husband and we've been involved in ministry for years now because of the investment that you made. Congratulations, Hobson Road. 70 years of faithful service and uh, so appreciative of all of the encouragement you have given us along the way. By the way, I did my internship back in the 90s at Hobson Road Community Church, and uh, it was a great experience and formative in my life and ministry. So again, congratulations. Happy 70 years serving the Lord. That's awesome. Hey, Hobson Road. This is the McGarvey's, as many of you already know. Uh, we miss you guys a lot. You guys played a big part of our history, and we are so thankful to have been a big part of yours as well. Uh, we started there as newlyweds in 2010, had our first home there in that parsonage across the way, mm -hmm. had three kids while we were with you guys, and uh, you guys truly changed the way we lived and helped raise our kids and helped teach us how to love church and love ministry and how to lead, and we've loved taking that to Colorado with us. Mm -hmm. We have been in part of a church plant here, and I find so much of my desires for church planting and for godly community come from Hobson Road Community Church. And the biggest part of that for me is living in the spirit and having the spirit of the Lord be the very unifying, wonderful part of drawing together in marriage in in our family and uh, in new church leadership staff, um, but even as a hope as a hopeful tool for people who have never really experienced that kind of outpouring of God's grace in prayer and in worship and in time together. So we're incredibly thankful for you guys and um, I hope you enjoy celebrating your rich history. Yep, we love our church. I'd like simply to tell you the story of Hobson Road Community Church. In the years following World War II, many suburbs exploded in population growth. Downers Grove was no exception. American servicemen and women returning home from overseas looked for new land on which to raise their families, and many of them found it in Downers Grove. Workers from Chicago sought homes along the railways from which they could commute to their city jobs, and once again, Downers Grove fit the bill with its brand new re renovated train station right along Main Street. Established companies looking to expand picked suburban sites for their factories, and one such company, Pepperidge Farm, chose Downers Grove. Our once quiet little community quickly became one of the busiest population centers in suburban Chicagoland. In 1950, Reverend Delmar Ross, a very recent graduate of the Great Lakes Bible School, moved to Downers Grove with his young wife, Phyllis. Pastor Ross had made arrangements with the Assemblies of God to, to plant and pioneer a new kind of church in our area. The Assemblies of God, which was then only about 35 years old, had developed successful churches in both rural communities and in urban centers, but there were relatively few churches in the quickly growing suburbs. Pastor Ross's vision was to plant a truly suburban Assembly of God, and he named the church accordingly. Pastor Ross partnered with a family by the name of Sellers, who owned a real estate agency in Downers Grove. The Sellers family became the founding members of Suburban Assembly of God, but it was their daughter, Ruthie, who was the driving force of the fledgling church's mission. Together, the Rosses and the Sellers gathered a, gathered a small community of folks who were likewise hungry to see this new Pentecostal congregation flourish in Downers Grove. They found available meeting space in the heart of Downers Grove at the Don Theater, already at that time a vintage movie house in an old building at the intersection of Forest and Warren Avenues. Pastor Ross took a weekday job at the Hinsdale Archery Company while leading the new church and celebrating the growth of his own young family. 
When the Don Theater closed, the fledgling congregation secured nearby meeting space in facilities used by the Downers Grove chapters of the VFW and the American Legion. By 1953, the church had established a viable foundation and was ready to take a more prominent place in the community. That spring was a busy one. His pioneering work now complete, Pastor Ross entrusted the congregation to a new pastor, Reverend Robert Rosen. The church formally incorporated and made its affiliation with the Assemblies of God official. Accordingly, that May became the birth date of Suburban Assembly of God. The congregation purchased property on Fairview Avenue just across the street from Hummer Park and began construction of their first permanent home, a small white cinder block church building which still stands there today. Over the course of the next 20 years, Suburban Assembly of God continued to worship in their new home. A succession of pastors led the church throughout those two decades. Thomas Schumati, Hugo Brem, Royce Shelton, Melvin Pollard, Richard Roloff, Leroy Grenad, and Harley Kennedy. They continued to preach the gospel and serve their community as God enabled them. Then, in 1967, Suburban Assembly of God purchased land on the corner of Main Street and 69th Street with plans to move again and build a larger facility. Those plans never materialized, however, and a year later, the congregation sold their new property and remained in the building on Fairview Avenue. In the early 1970s, Suburban, Assemblies of God, Suburban Assembly of God was a struggling church. Many of the founding members were no longer present, and the congregation had dwindled significantly. By 1975, only three families were still worshiping at Suburban Assembly of God. Significant consideration was given to closing the church entirely. However, just before that decision was finalized, the church was introduced to a young Bible school graduate from Iowa by the name of Joseph West. Pastor West and his wife Sharon agreed to move to Illinois and shepherd the church through what very well could have been its final days. Such was not to be the case though. Under Pastor West's leadership, the church grew and reached more people than ever before. In just five years, the church had outgrown its old home and saved the money needed to buy new property. They found that property on an old tree farm along Hobson Road, then a major thoroughfare stretching beyond the city's western border. A groundbreaking ceremony was held in the fall of 1980, and the new sanctuary and office space was completed 18 months later. By 1987, the church added a gymnasium and several classrooms to the existing structure. Just prior to the completion of the gymnasium, on Palm Sunday, a water main broke during construction and flooded the entire building, delaying completion of the project by several months. That same year, the Illinois Department of Transportation began construction on Interstate 355, which would cut Hobson Road off and leave Suburban Assembly of God on a dead end. Undaunted, Pastor West proclaimed to a local reporter, we may be hard to find, but we're tough to beat. <laughs> Throughout the 1990s, Suburban Assembly of God continued to grow in its size, scope, and missional effectiveness. The church became well known for its participation in the annual Downers Grove Heritage Fest, and later for its outdoor Christmas festival, which would often draw many hundreds of local families to see the light displays and watch the live nativity. However, unlike at the time of its birth, Suburban Assembly of God was no longer the only Suburban Assembly of God congregation in the area. Sister congregations had grown up in many surrounding communities including the neighboring towns of Lombard, Oakbrook, Bolingbrook, and Naperville, to name only a few. Pastor West and the congregation decided that a new name was needed, a name that would more closely identify them with the people in the neighborhoods they were best positioned to serve. Accordingly, in 1999, Suburban Assembly of God officially changed its name to Hobson Road Community Church. HRCC, as it was often called, retained its partnership and its affiliation with the Assemblies of God, but their new name helped the community recognize them as a truly local congregation. 
The area surrounding their building had seen significant development since their arrival more than 15 years earlier. And there were many new families to reach within only blocks of the church building. During these years, HRCC became a truly neighborhood-oriented church with plenty of activities and opportunities for kids, teens, and families who lived close enough to walk to and from their church home. The ministry of HRCC continued strong into the 21st century. By 2012, however, Pastor West was considering retirement from his pastoral role. His oldest son, Matthew, had become a successful singer and songwriter. That summer, after nearly 40 years of fruitful work at HRCC, the Wests made the transition in order to spend the next season of their lives working alongside their sons. HRCC reached out to a former staff member, Pastor Dan Martinson, who became the 11th pastor in the church's history. Pastor Martinson continued to encourage the congregation in their service to the Downers Grove community while also expanding their commitment to global missions and outreach. That also was the last time he ever wore a tie. Twenty twenty two became an important year in HRCC's story. That summer, Beth Boven became the first member of HRCC to make a transition into full time foreign mission work when she took an assignment with the Assemblies of God World Missions in Bolivia. Later that same year, 17 members of HRCC, under the leadership of Pastor Garrett Black, planted a new Assemblies of God congregation in nearby Glen Ellen. The church that got its start when a pioneer pastor had the vision for a truly suburban assembly, was now retelling its own story by planting yet another brand new suburban assembly for a new generation of believers. For more than 70 years, the people of Suburban Assembly of God and later Hobson Road Community Church have been blessed by God. There have been seasons of plenty and seasons of lack. There have been tremendous victories and celebrations, but also challenges and battles. And through it all, God has been faithful. The story of this church is one of a steadfast, loving God who never, ever gives up on his people. There is no way of knowing for sure how many thousands of lives have been transformed by the witness of this congregation. The precise mathematics of God's kingdom are impossible to discern, but certainly the work of God through the people of Hobson Road Community Church has reverberated in Downers Grove, in Chicagoland, across the country, and around the world for decades upon decades. And while the official records tend to highlight the names of pastors, staff members, and board members, it has been the congregants of HRCC who have been most responsible for the church's faithfulness to God's call. They have been the ones to share the gospel in our own community and to give sacrificially so that the ministry might move forward. They have been the ones who have welcomed guests and extended care to those in need. In many cases, their names and faces have been indelibly etched in the memories of those they served. Week after week, their dependable presence among us has been an expression of God's own faithfulness to his people. In the earliest years of Suburban Assembly of God, it was Ruthie Sellers and Harry and Luvita Clifford. As the congregation experienced its first generation of growth, it was people like Sal Tristano and Jesse Buckland. When it was time to build, it was Al and Sandy Medina and Mike Gresta. When we became HRCC, it was Jack and Adrian Stevens. It was Brian and Bonnie Carlson. Today, it's people like Bob and Marianne D'Onofrio and Scott and Sherry Taylor. They and countless others, far too many to name, have been a gift to each of us. Those that are still among us have enriched our lives and encouraged our faith while together we stand upon the shoulders of those who have already gone on to their eternal reward. This is the story of Hobson Road Community Church. This is our legacy of kingdom work. May the Lord bless us with many more years of faithful, fruitful ministry 
until he comes again. Can we give thanks together? One of these stories of our church will be told on video. Well, the house that we lived in before um, was a two-story basement, and I had a pool with a deck, above ground pool. And every means of that was a fall risk. So we thought, we should move. Why don't we look going west? And my brother lives in Bolingbrook, so we thought, why don't we just kind of move closer to a family member as well? We were working with two, uh, a realtor, and we were searching ourselves. But Andy found the house online himself, he called me from work and said, hey, Chris, I just saw, saw this house. It was just listed. Call a realtor, get a hold of him, let's go out there and see it. We looked around, and before we left, I turned to Andy and said, Andy, this is our home. He goes, are you sure? I said, yes, this is our home. So we made an offer that day, and nobody else ever stood foot in that house. And the house that I lived in before, we were there for 30-some years. And we move out here, and I know nobody. So after we kind of got settled, we um, I thought, okay, it's time for the next step. Let's look for a church. So where do you go these days? You Google it. And I went ahead and Googled Catholic churches near us. Went to a f three of them, I picked three. Went to each one of those a few times. But nobody talked to me at all. I went in, I sat down, I listened, I left, and that was about it. And it's not like I move fast, so there was plenty of opportunity for somebody to talk to me. We kind of just got on our way, and one day we were um, getting ready to run some errands on the weekend and we're getting in the car and a car pulls up at the end of our driveway facing the wrong way. So the driver is on our side, um, she can talk out the window. And I'm thinking, if this lady's coming here to look for directions, she's asking the wrong person. And I made my way down to the car and she introduced herself as Adrienne Stevens that she had owned the house two owners before. And she was telling me about how she landscaped the yard. Then she proceeds to ask if we had found a church yet. I said, no, I am I got that on the menu here. We're checking a few out, but we haven't found one yet. She said, well, you know, there's a really nice church right around the corner from you guys, Hobson Road Community Church. And she really spoke very highly of it. After a while, when the Catholic churches didn't pan out, I kind of gave it a rest for a little bit. And then something in the back of my head said, Chris, how much closer can a church be to you? I mean, you could walk there. <laughs> so I called the church to find out what time service was. I came, got her early so that I could have a little leeway time, just kind of getting my bearings coming in. And Don Keach was the first um, person who spoke to me and wound up being after we got talking. She's telling me all oh, that Adrian was her best friend. I thought, oh, Chris, of all the people, you get the one that's her best friend right off the bat. And, you know, I could feel her heart as she was speaking to me. And Dawn was just making me feel comfortable. And she just sat a couple rows ahead of where I still sit today, where Andy and I still sit today. And when church started and the worship team was up there and they were singing and everyone was free to express how the Lord was touching them. And that was so important to me because I didn't want to just sit there and take it in silently. I wanted to be able to feel it and express it. And halfway through service, I'm like, I have to look no further. I'm done. This is where our, our home church is. This is where we're going to go to church from now on. And I went home and told Andy, I said, Andy, I found our church. I said, this is amazing. The people there are friendly. 
It's small, it's very personable. It's such a good family church. I've seen so many people grow in different positions. It's like watching your own kids grow and you're part of it, they're your family. Our church family here, it's priceless. We couldn't get that any place else. And this is home. This is home for us. And it's like you're speechless. You just get to that point where how do you express how rich and loving your own blood family is? It's like here, how do you express how rich and loving your church family is? She's going to be in pictures. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, for sharing your story. First of our special guests tonight is Pastor Phil Schneider. He is the district and su superintendent for the Illinois District Council of the Assemblies of God. He traveled to be with us tonight. This is my pastor. Would you please welcome Pastor Phil? I want to see you break that tie out again. <laughs> hey, congratulations. You know, you think about 70 years. And some of you are going, but I've only been here 48 of the 70. Or, But 70 years of incredible ministry. Congratulations on that. You know, you think about the lifespan of an organization. So many of them never make 70. So many churches get to that point of that, you know, by 1975, it, you know. But people who have the faith to stand, people who have that faith to say, you know what, it's just going to get better. So I just want to say congratulations to all all of you, I think it is wonderful and amazing. Think about the, the lives that were changed in this place, the bodies that have been healed, the families who've been restored, the lives whose destinies have been changed. I love those, those first video stories from families who got their start here or whose ministry began in this place, who this will always be home for them. Now, what a lot of you may not know is about 38 years ago, Pastor Joe invited me. He was looking for a youth pastor and he invited my wife and I to come to Hobson Road to interview and to talk with him. And I, you know, it's funny how you remember things. And so I was here this last year and it had been 30 years since I've been here. And as I pulled up, I said to myself, this is not the place. Because when I was here 38 years ago, there was nothing around this place. And it's amazing to see, and I love that quote, it may be hard to find, but we're tough to beat. And you know what, friends, that is true. I just congratulate you guys today on the phenomenal work that's been done in this place. You know, a lot of times at 70 years, we're thinking about what? Retirement. We're thinking about, and this is a day to look back. This is a day to celebrate where the Lord has brought us and the things that God has done for us. But I, I love this verse from Jeremiah chapter 29. And I know a few of you are just getting ready to say, oh dear God, he's gonna start preaching. Did anybody tell him how long he has? Yep, pastor said no more than 100 minutes. So <clears throat> I'm going to do my best. Here's what the Lord spoke to Jeremiah the prophet. He said, when 70 years are completed, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place 
For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Listen to what the Lord said to Jeremiah about his people. At 70 years, my plans for you have just began. The plans to prosper you, plans to give you a future and a hope. And I just want to say today that while I congratulate you on 70 wonderful years of ministry, lives changed, ministries began. I'm excited to see what happens with Garrett and Access Church and Glen Ellen. All of the wonderful things of our past, but God still has a plan for us today. Amen? He's got a future for us and a hope for us that more lives are going to be changed. You think, should the Lord tarry, there's coming a day when people are going to say, man, it was at Hobson Road, a place that was still full of life, still a great place to express how the Lord has touched your life. I love that. I I took a picture of the original Pastor Ross, and I'm going to post that. Ross number one. (laughs) And uh, it is just a delight today to be with you. Thank you for the invitation. We love you guys so much. Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Phil. I believe we have a few more greetings. Oh, there they are. Happy 70th anniversary, Hobson Road Community Church, and I'm Jacob Bach, missionary in Spain, and have wonderful memories of years ago doing a kids' crusade at your church. My mom and stepdad, Sonia Spitzmesser, and Ray being a part of the church for years, and uh, just super grateful that uh, your church is around to help us do our work in Spain. So happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, HRCC. Um, I'm Beth Bovin, and I'm currently serving in Coach Bamba, Bolivia at the Bolivian Hope Center, um, which is a home for kids whose moms are in the prison here and they don't have other people to take care of them. So I am here to just love these kids and and show them God's love every day. Um, And I thank you for sending me and for all your support and encouragement and love along the way. Um, I love my church. Uh, Happy anniversary. Hi, Hobson Road. Congratulations on making it to the 70th anniversary milestone. My name is Melissa Wagner and just wanted to tell you how much of an impact that Hobson Road has made in my life. I started attending back in the 80s when I was invited to the Mission Arts program here at Hobson. But at that time, it was the Suburban Assembly of God under the pastorship of Pastor Joe and Sharon West. I attended regularly with my family, the Breadwells, during my teenage years. I was actually baptized here at the age of 15. God has really placed Hobson in my heart as I learned so much in that growth and I'm still being faithful to him today. I've met my husband and we've been married for almost 30 years, raising two sons. My son Ben is now serving in a ministry capacity um, through North Central University up in Minneapolis where he graduated and met his wife Carly. They have a almost one-year-old son, Parker, and actually Hobson Road is supporting them in their ministry work up in Minnesota. My son, Joseph, came back to Hobson Road for a brief period and was on active on the worship team before he recently transplanted down in Nashville. So I just wanted to say how much of a impact that Hobson Road has made in my life through pastors, Joe and Sharon West, as well as Sue and Dan Martinson, and I just wanted to say congratulations. Hey there, HRCC. I'm Rachel Delgado. I was the Children and Families Pastor from 2016 to 2020. I want to say that I miss you and I love you, and I want to say a special hello to all of those babies that we prayed for, that we longed for, that I never got to meet because they all showed up after I left. So hi, babies. I love you, your family loves you, your church loves you, and I cannot wait for the day that I get to meet you in person. For everybody else, I really do love and miss you, and I hope you have a fantastic anniversary celebration. Our HRCC story has already referenced our founding pastor, Pastor Delmar Ross. 
it was during his time here in Downers Grove that uh, he and his wife Phyllis welcomed their son, Randall Ross, uh, who has since become uh, a minister, one of the finest pastors in our Assemblies of God movement. He ended up, among many other things on his resume, pastoring in nearby Calvary Church in Naperville for nearly 20 years. When I became the pastor of HRCC 11 years ago, I did a, a dive into the history of this congregation and I was able to contact Pastor Delmar Ross by telephone, who at that point was retired and living in Florida. And I dare say he was delighted to hear from me, but he said, and I hope you won't mind me sharing this, he said, you know my son Randall pastors in the very next town over, you think he could send me word once in a while of how you're doing? <laughs> Pastor Randall Ross has already been a blessing to this congregation. He and his wife Andrea also have traveled great distance just to be with us this weekend. Would you please welcome Pastor Randall Ross? Is that, is that, you should see the look I get right now, the, the disdain of a sound person for a pastor who cannot remember to turn on the microphone is, is, is famous. Thank you, Pastor, for having me. Uh, we don't uh, want to go out much, and we are retired most of the time. I do travel, and I resent anyone complaining about retirement, like Pastor Phil, because... <laughs> There's a time when God's men need to walk into the sunset, but not yet. I, I was uh, on the board with Holda Batane. Do you remember Holda Batane? Yeah, that little firehouse. And I had just transitioned off, and in front of the whole general council, she said, you know, Randall Ross is on my board, and he's such a wimp. He's only 70, and he's going to Florida. I'm 90, and I'm still traveling the world. Let's give a hand to Randall Ross. And I'm like, okay, I have my parents and that. That's what makes you, makes you who you are. I am honored to be here. It is, it is something we decided immediately we need to do so I don't have to talk about myself. I can talk about mom and dad who deserve it, and on the founders, Pastor West, who is here, whose imprint is still deeply on you, right? And his son, Matthew, who would never come and sing for me, uh, <laughs> even though I, I was down the road, because it was, I don't know, I don't know exactly why that was, but he, he didn't. Uh, uh, I don't want to, I'm not going to give a sermon. To, I will be preaching tomorrow, maybe, depending on what he says after tonight. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. I only have about 20 some minutes, but uh, we're staying at a hotel. We've got a quiet hotel. I'm, I'm doing this just to, to warm myself up again because I don't do this often. And uh, we, we went to a nice quiet hotel and found out that it is the center tonight of the proms. <laughs> yeah, so if I have to be here tomorrow, you have to be here tomorrow because the theme of the, one of the proms tonight is casino night. So Pastor Dan will be there all night long, having a good time. <laughs> no. uh, when, I, when I was praying about this, this time together, you don't bring your, your, your sermons that you have. That's kind of a thing you're supposed to do when you preach out, bring something safe. I don't have to preach. That's the good news. I want to share with you uh, the history and how it impacts uh, who you are, and I believe what God has a little bit for the future. So if you'll give me a chance to read the Scripture... And, and talk for just a few minutes. Would, can, you, can you give me about 20 minutes of focus? Is that okay? I know you're hungry. I see some of you already looking like this uh, on the watch on it. But I want to read to you 2 Timothy chapter 1. Because it's Paul, it's Paul writing, as you know, one of the three pastoral epistles. And when we read the pastoral epistles, we usually think it's for old people. I did when I was a young pastor. You know, it's... Old people talk along the way. But when you get really understand it, it was Paul who was in his 60s, who had changed the world by faith, and now is making sure that his son in the faith, Timothy, is able to succeed. 
Paul doesn't talk about himself in 1st or 2nd Timothy that much. He asks him to bring his coat and he asks him to come before winter, but he's giving Timothy more of an encouragement on he can do this too. You know what I'm saying? That this generation can do what our generation and the ones before us did. And, and he takes the time to do that. And the way Paul does it is to talk about history. Let me read it to you. And Paul says, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dealt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded is also in you. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Can I hear an amen? I want you to kiss that. Pentecostals are supposed to have a sound mind. God didn't make you crazy. You brought that to him, and he's helping you, all right, just so you understand that. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which is given to us in Jesus Christ before time. So what Paul does is simply say this, Timothy, I know you're a little bit nervous. He's a young man. It says it. He says, stir up the gift. Don't be timid. His name was Timothy, timid man. Don't be timid. He was getting criticism. Read the book when you go home tonight. He was getting criticism. Don't let them d despise your youth. Don't let them be critical about your theology. Stop all the wives' fables and stuff. Stand your ground. Be a man of God. Choose good leaders to get the whole thing. He's going along the way. But what he does is says, Timothy, the reason I know you're going to do great in your generation, even though you don't believe it, is I knew your grandma. She had the real faith. I want you to catch that. Say real faith. That means there's a false faith or a pretend faith or an immature faith. Paul is the man of faith. He defined faith in the New Testament. He took Jesus Christ's gospel and he said, it's not by works, it's not by religion. You're not born into this by grace you're saved through faith. You know, he did the whole faith thing. He stood and gave his life that our lives would be based on God's grace through faith, not on works. We all should be grateful for that. So he says to Timothy, Timothy, you may be nervous, but you have the real thing. I've seen it. I know your grandma. My grandmother was here in the beginning with, with my mom and dad, Grandma Wilson, not Grandma Wilson. And she saved my life one Sunday morning. I don't know if you know the story or not. I was just a little one, and I didn't want to go upstairs. So I decided right before church to use the front door to go to the bathroom. I'm a preacher's kid, don't look shocked. <laughs> and my dad, Delmer Ross, was gonna kill me. I know that because he said that <laughs> to me as he came towards me. And my grandmother, Wilson, woman of faith, who literally probably raised me, stood between me and death and said, Delmer, you can't touch him now. You're too angry. God's got a plan for his life. I wouldn't be here without the faith of my grandma. I was raised on faith. Literally, no, both my grandma Ross and grandma Wilson, we had nothing but faith. We, we sat, I sat in the front row of Oral Roberts tent meetings because my dad was the tent man and my grandma next to me. I saw the miracles. Every other Saturday night, we would go to Catherine Kuhlman's revival meetings. And I saw, if you say, you've seen the anointing, unless you knew Catherine Kuhlman, you probably hadn't seen the anointing. Have you been waiting for me? That was her big statement on it. I was raised around my mom and my grandma praying. I prayed an hour a day, and I wasn't even saved. There's not many kids can say that. Why did you pray? Because I would not live. Grandma and dad and mom said, you're going to pray. So we knelt, and we prayed, and I thought about baseball and everything else, but I was learning the thing, grandma's faith. I saw miracles to my grandmother. I saw her do things God could not do in the normal situation. She was a bouncer in Gary, Indiana bar. You ever heard of Gary, Indiana? Yeah. Don't tell me how tough you are until you're a bartender and a woman and a bouncer in Gary, Indiana on a Saturday night. She went through four husbands. She went to an AG meeting because my mom brought her there. She came to Christ, transformed, full of the Holy Spirit. 
my grandma, Grandma Ross, I'll tell you about her tomorrow morning, from Peoria, Grandma Colebrecker, great-grandma Colebrecker, women of faith, my mom, Phyllis, and my dad. I remember my dad, he would run out of gas when he was here, he told me, and he said he would have to pray with the tank. Lord, you know we need to do church today. Give us gas. I don't know if gas came or the fumes were there or grandma, my mother was going <laughs> in the pipe. I don't know it. I just know we did nothing without prayer and prayer changed the world. I want to tell you a story about that. I remember a little later on because dad was on his grove, went to Ohio. I remember us sitting there. Do you know the corporation McDonald's? You ever heard of McDonald's Corporation? My dad had a chance to buy the first two McDonald's corporations in Ohio, 3000 a piece. It wasn't going to be a good investment. My dad was a great man of God, a lousy businessman. <laughs> My heritage is not money, it's spirit. I remember my dad in the offerings and pioneering and say, okay, I'm going to take the offering. And God has just laid on my heart to give the last, my $5. And we said, every Sunday night, if we behaved, we went to McDonald's. You could feed the whole family for $5, the whole family. And we'd be back there going, my brother and I, don't do it, Dad. <laughs> there went the $5. How are we going to McDonald's? God will provide. God does miracles with real faith. Can I hear an amen? And what those of you who have a history of that, God does those things, not so we can talk about the good old days, so that our children and our children's children can hear that God is bigger than the world. I never once heard how bad the world was. I never once heard how bad church was. I never heard that we didn't have money. I never heard anything except God is good. He will take care of all. That's the generation. I sit at the table and hear the ladies in the church talk about how God healed their arm or their broken this or they had no money for food and some neighbor came by with bread along the way. When I was young, I had a first church. We went to the south and I've never been below the Mason-Dixon line. I always heard when Northerners go below the Mason-Dixon line, they never come back. They just disappear somewhere. And there was about 60 people that morning, Sunday morning, and the offering was $1.35. Now I knew why I got to church. Superintendents don't give you good churches when you're young. They see if you can survive the tribulation. Then they maybe give you an opportunity. <laughs> So next Sunday, I did a sermon on tithing. I said, God's led me to preach on tithing. I'm not going to do it. Don't worry. In the service, one half the congregation got up and walked out of me when I read the text of Malachi. I went home and said, Dad, what are we going to do? He said, God is good. You're going to make it. Preach the word. Show up. Be faithful. I'm going to tell you a story. At one time, 1% 1 of the Assemblies of God attendance, the entire Assemblies of God attendance at Astorville, came from my mom and dad's three kids in the ministry. I want you to think about that. Three kids from a little town in Illinois and 18,000 people attended our three churches. And you know what? None of that is because of us. It wasn't my talent. It was a fact I had praying parents, praying grandparents, faithful people in the church who treated me like their own and treated me like I was somebody. And anything, I, I was telling, I was, this is not, a, this, I'm telling this not about me. I know that in person I led 150,000 to 350,000 people to Christ in public meetings because I traveled I spoke quite a bit. It's not bragging. None of that's because of me. I'm not alive because of me. I'm alive because this church prayed for me. I was born in the Aurora Hospital. Uh, Mom tells me it was the worst eight days of her life. She said it all the time. You nearly killed me. And 
I was born and I wouldn't, I was born and they put forceps, I had brain damage when I was born. The doctor was supposedly drunk, put forceps, pulled me out, had brain damage. So I, they didn't know it at first, but I began to demonstrate. I couldn't talk, I was bumping into stuff, I would, I, would, I was in, you know, just even at two to three. And they took me to the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. And the doctor said he has brain damage, he will never be normal. Our suggestion is you put him into a home for damaged kids. Dad brought me in front of this church, held by my mother, and he said, I believe we can change the world. And this church put their hands on me and prayed, and God healed me. And I've been normal ever, almost normal <laughs> ever since. Why do I tell you that? Because the enemy loves for us to think our life doesn't matter. We're, we're not the biggest church. You know, we're not the richest church. We're not famous. And in God's eyes, None of that counts. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? The enemy wants to rob you of the power of your story. He wants you to be ashamed that you trusted God, that you had to pray for food one time, that you had a marriage problem and God was faithful, that your kids are struggling and you're embarrassed and he doesn't want to tell how you stood by faith. And you're not ashamed to go to church and raise your hands and say, to God be the glory. When I was a teenager, I was an atheist. I was messed up, long hair. You don't wear long hair in the 70s in a Pentecostal church. My mom was the preacher of the family. She'd make me go and I sit in the back, majoring in biochemistry at a secular university. And she was, before she preached, she would stop the service and say, that's my son back there, the guy with the long hair. He said, he's not serving Jesus. Before we, before we preach, I need you to pray. Now, today you can't do that. We're raising, I know snowflake is a gift. I, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I know how sensitive we are with our kids. I wasn't raised in that family. I wasn't told I was the cream of the world. I wasn't told I was the smartest kid because I wasn't. I was told that God made me for a reason. And here's the story of your great-grandma Kohlberger, who pioneered the first five churches in Southern Illinois with Sunday school right on the horse. And here's your grandma, Ross. I'll tell you her story tomorrow a little bit, encourage you with, with a real word, a sermon tonight. It's not the sermon. And my mom and dad, who nobody knew, but served me in almost every church as associates and helpers and praying and came and worked with me. And I want to just tell you, this generation needs to know that the God of Or Roberts and Catherine Coleman and Rick Warren and all of the big shots is their God. And it doesn't matter what politics is going on. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's important. But that doesn't define our future. God is greater than the problem. And we prove that by praising God when we don't feel like it. We prove it by speaking faith when our heart feels negative. We prove it by having a positive attitude about a generation that didn't have the foundation we have. And I feel sorry for them. They didn't get to go to Sunday night church and watch the crazy things. Crazy people, we were, we were crazy. It was the best show in town. I don't regret a moment of it. I don't regret one moment with Deacon Don running across the top 
and grandma dragging me to the altar and says, you're going to get saved tonight and tonight it's going to stick or I'm going to kill you. I thought that was, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was love language from Gary, Indiana. That meant I mattered. Somebody mattered whether I lived or died. I remember only to tell you, give it to your kids and your grandkids. If any generation needs to be built up and encouraged with hope, it's this generation. Because no one's telling them we can turn the world around. They don't know that anything's good, let alone how good God is. But you can tell them. You can tell your story. You can tell God's answer to prayer. And more importantly, you can sit down and kneel down and pray for this church. I believe that God has a plan for this church. I'm not here just to talk about that. I don't do that. Anybody knows me, you know me, Phil. I don't blow smoke. I don't do that. I know in my heart there's good times ahead. But it won't be easy. And it won't be without faith. And it won't be without some tears shed at night so that you can reap joy in the morning. I, I want to encourage you. Look back. Let's celebrate. Pastor Dan, you're, you're such a great historian. I know more about the, my dad now than I did before. <laughs> I, just knew, I just knew he tried to kill me a lot. <laughs> I want to tell you, God loves you. And he who has begun a good work in you will do it. Not maybe. Not I hope so. I know in whom I have believed. And I believe that God is going to do it again. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord Jesus, thank you for the stories. Oh, Lord, we could sit around for hours and share the goodness of God because that's what we do. Lord Jesus, I pray right now for those who have been weary in well-doing, I pray for those, Lord, who have focused perhaps more on the problems than on the source. We're all guilty. We're all sinners saved by grace. Thank you for calling us always. That's why we gather, to be encouraged and to be challenged. Lord, I pray for fresh faith. I pray for the faith, the real faith, the faith of our forefathers, the faith of those who stood in the depression, the faith of those who raised the dead and healed the sick, saved the lost and alcoholics, came to Jesus, and people ran to you. I pray, God, that that faith will be so strong in this place that everyone who enters the house will say, surely, God is here. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Well, thank you, Pastor Ross. Are you glad you came to receive that word? What a timely word. What a timely word. I'm going to give one final prayer of thanksgiving and benediction for you, but our night is not over. There are many, many things planned for you. I'm going to invite you to dismiss yourself in just a moment. This way, through the cafe foyer area and into the gymnasium, there's plenty of places to sit. There's an absolutely obscene amount of food there because gluttony tonight is not one of the deadly sins. It is a, a, a special, special anointing. There are photographs to take a look at. There's a slideshow running. There's different artifacts and books and all sorts of things from our history. So would you sit together for a while tonight? Would you thank our guests for being with us? Would you visit and tell the stories and encourage one another all the more, all the more? HRCC, can I ask you to stand? Father, thank you for the legacy of faith. We are uh, we are those who have been asked to carry it in these days. Lord, help us to care for it well. Help us to steward that which you have entrusted to us such that 70 years from now, our children and our children's children will still be telling the story of what God did at Hobson Road Community Church. Lord, should you tarry beyond that, we ask that the plans that you have for this church and for this fellowship and for each individual 
who is part of this community. Lord, we ask that those plans would be blessed by you such that they would go forward. We ask, Lord, that you would strengthen and encourage us. We pray, Lord, that you would build up our faith and cause us to be filled with the gifts of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for loving us, for caring for us, for sustaining us, and for providing for us. Tonight, Lord, we give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody says, amen. Amen. Bless you, church. Please stay and celebrate with us.